and you get that gloss to it. And at the very, right after I put it together, I add those vegetables, the tomato puree, put all the products together. And we're cooking this for over an hour, hour and a half. So we're not going to lose any flavor profile. And so there's really no right or wrong way. And the methods and the steps are, are just basically guidelines. So don't be afraid to change things if you feel that you've come up with a better way to make a recipe. Creative cooking, I love it. And I did this intentionally so that we could show you another method um, that goes basically against the norm, I guess, in the cooking standards. But this way, I just wanted to show you how we came up with the same sauce, same flavor profile, changing the method, one step, changing it, and uh, still coming up with a very, very quality, quality type of um, stock and ingredients and the sauce itself. Uh, right now, we have now finished uh, cooking the sauce for an hour and a half. We've got a nice color to it. It's got a nice gloss to it, good consistency. The vegetables have been cooking in here over an hour and a half. And so now at this point, we're going to go ahead and strain the sauce, and then we'll go ahead and shock it, cool it down, get it to blow 140 degrees, and then label, date it, and hold it. Um, sub sauces that can be made from this um, can be a Bordelais sauce, peppercorn sauce, um, you can make an, uh, a brandy sauce, anything like that. You start with a brown sauce, uh, Jack Daniels sauce. There's a lot of different sauces you can make just from this basic recipe. Um, what I'd like to do now is go ahead and strain our brown sauce. And using the method I did from the start, we actually control the lump in our gravy, in our sauce. Gravy is another word for sauce. We don't My Italian friends lumps. call their red sauce gravy. And if this with the vegetables, you have to actually help it go through the china cap because you have such a quantity of mirepoix in the pan. And 